Hi everyone and welcome to the next video in our course Beginners Basics for FreeCAD 0.22 or what will be known as FreeCAD version 1. In this video we're exploring the interface of FreeCAD but this time understanding it from the point of navigating our views and using the mouse and keyboard. This is essential for when you come to 3D modeling which we'll come to in the video after. So I hope you enjoy these videos and let's have a look how we would navigate the 3D view using our mouse and keyboard in FreeCAD. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. Let's begin by creating a simple object in the form of a cube. So we'll use the drop down for our workbenches in our standard toolbar, drop this down, and I'm going to choose the PAR workbench. Remember, I've got other workbenches installed here, so you'll have less workbenches. So just come down and select the PAR workbench. In the part workbench, we have our toolbar that runs down the bottom. If you see up the top, then as in the previous video, we just drop it down onto this toolbar and we start using the tools. I'm using the cube, also available from part, primitives, and cube. This creates a cube on screen, which we use in our navigation. This is the 3D view. And this is the tree view. You can see the cube appearing in the tree view as well as in the 3D view. All objects are added to the 3D view at a position along the X, Y, and Z axis. From the coordinate system, you can see the X running this way, the Y running this way, and the Z. We also see the same coordinate system on our navigation cube in the far right hand corner. The colors for the axes are always the same. So X will be red, Y will be green and Z will be blue. Now there is a point in 3D space called the point of origin, and that is at 000, where this cube has been placed. We can see that by coming out to view and toggle axis cross. You'll see the axis cross has been added here. This is the point of origin. If I take the cube and come over to the view tab, I can make the cube transparent by coming down to the object style and setting the transparency to something like 80 by typing on the keyboard. Now you can see the axis cross sitting at point zero zero here. If I right clicked on the cube and clicked transform, I can move this cube away from that center point. We'll just move it here for the time being. I hit OK. Click off, you can see point zero zero here, and this has been offset from that point over to here. And you can see that by clicking on the cube, coming down to the data tab, and looking at the placement. So you see we have a placement here. By opening up, we'll see the position has changed. So the position here is in millimeters. This is now four millimeters away. We can change the position of the cube by using the arrows or typing in. So if I want to put it back to where it was, I can hit zero, place it back at the zero position along the y-axis. If we were to create a sphere rather than a cube, so come up and click on the sphere or part primitives and select sphere, You'll notice it has a different position. It hasn't been positioned by a corner. It's been positioned in the middle of the sphere. Let me transform this out of the way by right clicking on the sphere, clicking transform and moving this over. We'll hit okay. So what we have now is a sphere on the left and a cube on the right. We'll use both the sphere and the cube in our exercise. I'm just going to click on some blank space to unselect both of those. You see both the objects are in the tree view 
and I can be selected from here, as well as being selected from the screen. To move around our scene, we have to understand how to use pan, zoom, and rotate. To use these, we need to change our navigation type. This is a set of presets that can be located down the bottom here. At the moment, it's saying touchpad. If I click on that, you can see we have a number of navigation types in here. So we've got Blender, Standard CAD, and Tinkercad in here, plus a number of other types. I'm using the touchpad. Now, what these allow us to do is change the preferences of the hotkeys and the mouse movements to navigate around our scene. So if I hover over this button down the bottom, you'll see a pop-up appear. This shows me the different mouse clicks and keyboard controls to navigate around my scene. The touchpad can be used for both mouse and laptop, and it's my preferred method of navigation because I use a mouse at my desk or when I'm on the go, I'm using the touchpad. After selecting a navigation type, then it's worth familiarizing yourself with the keyboard and mouse controls. So we'll start with pan and you can see from the touchpad controls, we hold down shift and move the mouse from left to right or up and down. Notice that the coordinate system and the navigation cube do not change in the view. So no matter where we pan, these stay stationary. But you'll notice that the axis cross does move. Our point of origin moves to the left or to the right, depending on where we pan. For zoom, if we roll over the button down the bottom, you'll see the zoom is to use the mouse wheel. The default behavior of the zoom is to zoom at mouse. So we'll zoom at the mouse pointer. So where we put the pointer, we'll zoom at that position. We can hover over, say, a vertex and zoom, and we'll zoom into that vertex or an edge or a face. You'll notice as we zoom, the dimensions change in the bottom right hand corner. If we look at this cube, if I click it and come over to the cube on the left hand side, you notice that its length is 10 millimeters, its width is 10 and its height is 10. I'm going to bring this around so it's face on to the view. So I'm gonna come up to my navigation cube up the top here and click on front. I'm going to pan down so this is around about in the middle. Now, when I zoom, you see that this starts to reflect the size of the box. This is better demonstrated with a sketch. You'll see that our dimensions on the bottom here, because we've got a 2D object, they will be reflected as the rectangle fits to the screen. So rotate is also performed at the mouse pointer. If we roll over the menu down the bottom, I can see for this navigation style, rotate is alt followed by the mouse movement. So wherever I place the mouse, holding down alt and just moving my mouse, you'll notice that we'll get a pink sphere in the middle. This is where the mouse was at the point of rotation. Because we're rotating at mouse pointer, that will stay at that position and will rotate around that point. I can also hover over a vertex, say the vertex of this cube, and rotate around that vertex there. And the same for this edge. Now, if you're coming from another CAD package, the behavior of the rotation can be altered, the same as the zoom. This is from Edit. Preferences, coming into display, and then clicking on navigation. And you'll see that the zoom at cursor has the number of zoom steps here, which can be modified. We've got the invert zoom, and also we've got the rotation mode. So you can see at the moment it's drag at cursor. This can be changed to window center or object center. So with window center, click that and hit. OK, you'll see that the point, no matter where we are, is at the window center. So you see that there. So I can be down here. The point of rotation won't be here. It will be at the center of the window. And I'm going to change this back. Go back to preferences. Back to navigation. To drag a cursor. And hit OK. Now we have the navigation tool 
in the top right hand corner here. As we rotate around these objects, you can see that our cube changes. So if I look from the top, by clicking on the top face of that cube, it positions me at the top view. If I bring this around and say, click on the front, our viewpoint will be from the front. So we can use this cube to bring us around to say a certain position and then click on the cube to go face on to that viewpoint. The corners of the cube can be used as well. So if I click on the corner here, so this one here, we get the corner view or this one. And also we can pick the edges as well. Let's bring those around. We're going to pick the top. We can rotate by clicking on the arrows as well. So we have some navigation from the cube. These viewpoints are reflected in the standard toolbar as well. So if we drop this down, we have a number of different views. Isometric view, and then all the viewpoints, and you can see the hotkeys by the side as well. There is also one other hotkey as well. So if I hit home on the keyboard, that puts me back to the default view. This is quite handy if you just want to reset your views and get your bearings. We're going to finish this video by looking at these two tools here. The fit all and the fit selection. I'm going to zoom out of the scene. So I've zoomed right out. You can see our dimensions here, our dimensions of the screen. You can't see the objects within. If I click the fit all, it'll fit all the objects to my viewpoint. So no matter where I am, I zoomed out and panned off to the right hand side and just kept going. Using the fit all, we'll bring it back into view. The fit selection will fit the selection. So if I select the sphere by clicking on it, left click with the mouse and use fit selection. It will fit the viewpoint to my selected object. The same if I click the cube. So I'm clicking from the tree view using the left click and use the fit selection. So remember we can select objects from the tree view or from 3D view itself. If I select an object, so if I select this object here, you notice I've selected the face. Let's zoom in. We'll get into this selection as we start 3D modeling. So I selected the face, I can select the edge or I can select a vertex. Fit selection will still fit that object to the scene. Even if I selected a vertex, a face, or an edge, I can fit both these objects to the 3D view. Click one, left click one, hold down the control on the keyboard, and click the other. I've actually selected both of these objects. If I zoom out, you can see them there. And zoom right in and use fit selection. So now I've fitted the cube and the sphere, the ones that I've selected, to the 3D view. So we're now at the point that we've learned how to navigate around the scene. We've explored the user interface, how to move the panels, combine tabs, and also move icons on the toolbar, as well as obviously installing FreeCAD in the first place. In our next videos, we'll start modeling and learning how to create models from the ground up. Hope you enjoy these videos, and I hope to see you in the next lesson. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.